What happened with Austin? Obviously, practice Wednesday, but we saw that he's been out the past. Uh, yeah, practiced uh, phenomenally well too. Um, came back and just had a really high-level practice and finishing every run like crazy. Um, and just came up a little bit sore after the the practice. Didn't happen during the practice, but just felt a little bit of soreness in his hip. Um, but uh, felt much better the last two days, and real hopeful that he can play. Just being more cautious with the. Yeah, and you know, just on Wednesday, guys, this guy was flying. He looked incredible. All of his speeds, um, his workload, just, I mean, amazing. Uh, had an awesome practice, stayed after practice with Justin, and just, you know, felt a little sore. So we just wanted to be careful with him the next two days. Uh, so hopefully he can play. And then uh, just with Drew? Uh, Drew practiced this week, and uh, I'm, I'm hopeful that he can play. He was out there uh, yesterday in pads, he was there you know, really all three days, but yesterday in full pads uh, and has practiced well. So uh, we're listing them as questionable, but we're, we're hopeful he can play. And then are you guys uh, expecting to activate Justin Jones for the game, or is it still to be determined? It's still to be determined, but again, like Drew, he's practiced uh, all three days and in pads, uh, has looked good, but we're just going to make sure that final yes, and, uh, and then we'll, we'll go from there, but um, hopeful that he can play. Hey, uh, Coach, I talked uh, to Sean Merriman a little earlier this morning, and I asked him about Rashawn Slater, mm -hmm. and he mentioned William Rowe, Orlando Pace, um, Walter Jones. What's your thoughts? <laughs> <laughs> Probably my your th my thoughts are the same as your thoughts. I would uh, I would imagine when you're talking about those three players. That's rare stuff. That's rare company, and. I think what makes it legitimate is who's it who it's coming from, because Sean Merriman is that type of player. And if you know Sean, he doesn't say something that's not true. One thing around being around special players is normally they don't throw out compliments because they feel like it. That's normally my experience with special players, is they don't throw out compliments because they feel like it. So obviously Sean feels that way. And you know I know that we certainly feel that way about him in terms of his ability as a player and as a competitor. Um, now what those guys did is they did it over the course of a decade plus, and that's the key to being as good as they were, is to do it over and over and over again and, and doing it better and better and better and better. So that's going to be Rashawn's challenge, and uh, I know that he'll be up for it. I think we've got him uh, zoned in on that because uh, when I mentioned that to him, he says, uh, it, I'm looking at the Patriots. Yeah, I mean, Rashawn's been raised the right way. He comes from a tremendous family, and he's got such a great head on his shoulders, as most great competitors do, and they're very critical of their own game, and I think he knows how much he needs to improve and how much he needs to learn, and he's so self-aware that way, and it's a quality that uh, you need to have if you're hoping to be as good as he is. So uh, I'm excited that he said that because – our opponent that we're playing this week is really, really good. And I know that he's really aware of that because he's been studying tape. And the fact that he said that makes me know that he has been studying the tape because we're playing a really good team this week. Um, Brandon, Joe mentioned yesterday just about things coming out of the bye week, bye week with the offense that he wanted to you know, implement a little more design quarterback movement in some of the passing game stuff. Mm -hmm. just, did you guys feel like you got away from that a little bit? Do you feel like there wasn't enough of it early on? Or is it just something that you feel like you can, you can capitalize on by implementing a little bit more of it? Yeah, just I think it's such a strength of his, and, and I think a strength of his is a strength of ours, and I don't think you can ever have enough of it. And I think every game takes this shape and life of its own, and you've heard me say that. Uh, but I do think that what you can do is, is kind of commit to a, um, a game plan. Uh, and, and, and on offense, you can do that with those specific plays because of where they come. Uh, you can kind of implement them at any down and distance, any field zone, um, so to speak. So um, I just think that's a... It's a point of emphasis for us to, to create more of those type of plays for him. And what it will do is it create more space for our offense. And I think, you know, like we talked about, um, more effectiveness and, and, and explosions. So uh, hopefully we can do that as we move forward this, this second part of the season. Oh, Shelly. <laughs> he was never in the doghouse. Um, you know, he was, uh, you know, Asante just needed a second to chill out. Um, he played fantastic last week against Baltimore. He was really, really good in the game, really good in the game, uh, if you watch that game closely. Uh, and he's responded just like how we knew he would. Um, and 
I think what says so much about Asante is that we were so surprised that, you know, he had a couple tough plays against Cleveland. It just shows you the standard that he set, much like Rashawn. They've set really high standards for their performance, and they're only seven game, you know, six games into their careers. Uh, Asante has practiced outstanding this week. Uh, was really, really good yesterday. Made a couple plays yesterday that I was pumped up about. And we'll see how he does this week against a really good team. But he's the right guy to be coaching, and we're going to build our defense with him for sure.